Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. Streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Some things are just better together. Like party playlists and Friday nights. Campfires and ghost stories. Peanut butter and chocolate. And Reese's Cups are the perfect combination of creamy peanut butter and delicious milk chocolate. So, when you want something sweet, you can't do better than Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Buy Reese's today wherever candy is sold. Hey, I'm Jamie Glowacki, and you are listening to Oh Crap, I Love My Toddler, But Holy Fuck. This is a podcast for conscious parents who drop the F-bomb a lot. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. You guys, I'm having the best day. Do you ever wake up some days and just, I don't know, like for no reason at all, you're just filled with this like sense of well-being and everything's right in the world. Yeah, I'm having one of those days and it's kind of awesome. Of course, I am recording this at 4.45 in the morning, so there's plenty of time for that to change. But for now, (laughs) I'm feeling really, really good. All right. Um, as always, you know, my opening shtick, which is if you are enjoying my podcast, please, please, please leave a review. That super helps us be seen by more parents. And of course, hit us up if you have something you'd like me to cover here. Jamie at jamieglowacki.com. Please be aware that I do not advise via email, but I do have coaching uh, options available at jamieglowacki.com. But I would love to hear your thoughts if you want me to cover something on this podcast. A mama did write in to me and she wanted to know my thoughts about swearing. Not mine. Kids. Kids swearing. We all know I swear. We all know I have a mouth like a truck driver or a sailor or whatever you want. Busy mom. (laughs) But she wanted to know my thoughts on kids swearing. And so I thought this was going to be one of those episodes where I had very little to say and I would, you know, say my bit and then move on to another topic. And it turns out that I think this is pretty much a full episode because I have a lot to say about kids and swearing. (laughs) So. You know, this this mama said, you know, like she and her husband, they, they they swear a lot and that she doesn't really care about it with her kids and that to her, they're just words. And she was just curious about my thoughts. And I actually tend to agree with a lot of caveats. Yeah, I do believe that swearing is just words that we've given extraordinary power to. I mean, I don't know why fudge, you know, doesn't carry the same weight as fuck it. They're just both words. So we have, uh, you know, we've attributed that power to those words. I personally think that a well-timed and well-used curse word is an art form and a skill. And again, we all know my mouth. So I can clearly see uh, both camps in swearing. I personally tend to hang with like a Oh, what do I want to you know, say? Maybe a hippie, hippie dippy crowd or a, <laughs> that's what I say for like conscious parenting. I tend to hang with more permissive parents. So I, I see kids swearing all the time and it doesn't bother me, but I am well aware of how society views it. And I think for a lot of parents, it really comes down to being a respect issue. And I can totally appreciate that as well. Now, There's all kinds of ways to hit swearing because there's like conscious swearing, there's unconscious swearing, there's the accidental swear. I'll never forget my son, um, you know, his preschool. I've talked about his preschool before. He had this amazing preschool that was sort of Waldorf and Montessori in uh, in style without being uh, officially either principled. They did not have a play yard. They were downtown Providence and there was no play yard. So they utilized all of downtown. And it was really cool because, you know, they were just like city kids who knew downtown better than most parents. But one day we, you know, as parents were going to pick up the kids, the, the teachers met us at the door and they're like, okay, there was an incident today. There was an accident and with a truck and a car and the people got out of the car and there was so much swearing at each other. And so like this line of kids on the city street that were holding hands, you know, just started to like chant like, fuck you, motherfucker. And so they were like 
we're really sorry, but your kids learned these like new words, right? And so it was that very accidental they had heard. And of course, what made the kids chant the swear words was the power with which the words were said, right? So clearly, there was so much power behind these words that it was very attractive to a young mind, which like, oh my God, like, they they appear to be like a superhero when they say these words, right? Because it's this power behind it. Now, we've also, also, all of us have had the experience of a kid saying like fire fuck instead of fire truck, and then the room bursts out laughing, right? So if a kid says fire fuck and everybody around him laughs, then the kid's going to repeat it over and over again because it got a response, right? Same thing with even the accidental swear, like in the preschool scenario, it, if you respond, it got a response right away. So then the kids were like, oh, this is kind of fun. Let's play with this. Remember, kids love a response from us, whether positive or negative. They love to see us turn blue in the face. So, you know, if they say the word shit and we freak out, they're like, oh, well, this is kind of a cool tool I now have to make mommy blow a gasket. We also know the kid who can burst out with a swear in the perfect moment because they heard us or someone else say it in the same kind of moment, right? Like if you stub your toe and say shit, if your kid, you know, knocks their knee or stubs their toe and says shit, you know where they got it from. And it's, we tend to burst out laughing because it's like, oh my God, they used it well. So, you know, on either case, if you're going to blow a gasket or laugh, you have created a reaction. Again, I do think that Dropping dropping a, a well-timed curse word is an art form. However, coming out of the mouth of a three-year-old at the market for me is a different thing. Yeah. I think this is an area of like, know your kid, know what you allow. So I think there's an issue of like, are you going to allow your kid to swear or are you not going to allow your kid to swear? And and really that's that's up to you. And again, I can see both camps. So some Parents are like, I don't care what they do at home. I just don't want it out in the world. So I tend to be that parent. My kid now at 13 happens to be that kind of kid. I don't mind if he swears at home with me, but really he knows better to not do that in front of my mom or out in the world. And again, it's a matter of respect. Like my mom's older. I just don't want him swearing willy nilly, right? Now, when he was younger though, I wasn't having it. I didn't even like him saying um, crap. I didn't like him saying like I got screwed, right? It just sounds really weird coming out of a three-year-old's mouth. So again, I'm talking my kid right now is 13, not three. So it's your personal choice if you don't mind your kid swearing in public, right? Uh, And you have to know your kid. And is your kid, if your kid says shit when they, you know, bump their toe at home and and you're like, yeah, whatever, it's just the word shit. And then they do it out in public and you freak out. You're sending like a really bad mixed message to your kid. So it has to kind of be one or the other. And, And again, it's knowing your kid. If your kid is the type of kid who can do something just at home but not out in public, well, then is there any harm? I don't know. That's, again, your personal choice. For most of the world, though, yeah, it's a really big deal if your three-year-old says shit out in the market. So the biggest issue here is do you feel like dealing with the world judging you? And that's really, it's really your choice. And and I know there are some parents who really don't care. I have a, I have a great friend whose kids swear like little sailors they always have. And I'm talking about like like saying fuck. And, and as little kids, she doesn't care about judgment. I mean, she'd be like, stop it. But she she really did not the judgment of other parents or older people staring you down in the market, it really didn't affect her. So she didn't care. It's her choice. She holds firm. And I know people talk shit about her and her kids. And I know she doesn't get invited to things because of the way her kids speak, but she doesn't care. Would you? And you have to ask yourself, honestly, would you? So that's your choice. I'm sort of just laying out what I've seen in the world and what the parameters are. Now, my personal opinion, when Pascal was little, I did not, like I said, I didn't even love to hear the word crap or screwed coming out of his mouth. It just, it just didn't feel right, to be honest. He was hilarious, in fact, because he, when he would say crap, he would say like, oh, crap, potty training. I didn't say a bad word, mommy. (laughs) I said your book. Oh, crap, potty training. So he like totally had a legit out. And I have to give him credit for figuring that out. (laughs) 
Now, because of his preschool as well, there were words that were not allowed to be said, right? And it, if I remember correctly, they were hate, stupid, jerk, and crap. Uh, we added Jesus Christ to the list because his grandfather says that in moments of of frustration. He says, oh, Jesus Christ. So I, Pascal, I had a little three-year-old who would go, oh, Jesus Christ. And of course, I am not Catholic or Christian, but I don't want my three-year-old saying, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so one of the things I would do, and I did this sort of intuitively, and it really worked well. And then subsequently, I advised friends and clients, and it has worked really well, is every morning we would actually run through the words he wasn't supposed to say. Yeah. And we would say them just once to say like, hey, you know, what are the words that you're not going to say today? And he would say, hey, stupid jerk, Jesus Christ, crap. I think it was because like he actually got to say them and get them out of his system. He never said them in school. He never got in trouble and he wouldn't he really wouldn't use them out and about in our in our life outside, not even in the house, actually. And of course, every year those jacked up, right, depending on his age, what he'd heard. I remember at that time he hadn't been privy to any of the truly swear where, you know, shit, ass, uh, damn, hell. Oh, I think we added hell in there. Um, and, and of course the F-bomb. So that just super helped in every single morning. Or he'd even say, you know what, mommy, do you know the words that I'm not supposed to say? And I was like, yeah, go ahead, lay it on me. And I think he just got it out of his system. So that is one definite trick. If you have some words that you want your child not to use, you can like have them use them in the context of, I'm not going to say this in the morning. Allowing him to say that, it just, it, it just seemed to help. And again, know your, know your kid. If this trick feels like it's going to backfire on you and your kid's just going to have a litany of, you know, saying the bad words over and over and over again, then don't do that. But for some kids, it, it works really, really, really well. Now, of course, as your child gets older and has more discretion, you may or may not want to allow them more swearing. And again, it's it's a personal choice. For so many people, it's an issue of respect. And I respect anybody's need for that respect. <laughs> and, you know, it's of course, it's so much easier as your child gets older and they have more comprehension of the, the more complex things that are under swearing. So like, for example... Pascal, I, I don't check Pascal's texts. I don't feel the need. I ride with trust first unless he gives me a reason not to trust him. So for the moment, I don't check his texts. I did ask him. I happened to see a text, though, like his phone was on, you know, on the table and a text came up and I happened to see it and there was some swearing. And so I had a talk with him that, you know, I don't check your text, but a lot of parents do check their kids' texts. Now, if you're dropping the F-bomb in your text, you seem like a type of kid to another parent. So we have a good friend who they're very, very Christian and uh, don't allow any sort of swearing. And I said, if his mom reads that text, that's going to color how she feels about you. And this mom loves Pascal and I would hate for her to like have judgment, but it does happen. So, you know, I had to let Pascal know that you are going to be, you're going to be seen in a certain light, you know? And so that's the way you have to be able to to know that and that it could it could influence some friendships at this age. Yeah. And I, I go through it with him, too. It's like I know that there are people that don't appreciate my cussing on this podcast. I know they don't appreciate it on Facebook. They don't you know, they get mad that it's in my book. And and I've made a personal choice that the the type of moms that resonate with me, the type of parents that resonate with me are the ones who can drop the F-bomb pretty casually. And so those are sort of my people. <laughs> and so, but I, I am aware of how I am seen in certain circles and that's just a choice I've made. Yeah, but I'm an adult. And so I had to run through that with Pascal. Monarch Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch Legacy of Monsters, streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. We had a funny story. Um, my mom was in the hospital. She was in intensive care about three, four years ago. And 
it, it really bad. She had a, a stroke and she had no memory and we had to sort of be on 24 hour watch with her. And so I would take the night shift and I would bring my iPad, of course, you know, for the overnight shift. And uh, I put the iPad and the Bluetooth keyboard in my backpack. And I guess the the keyboard turned on, you know, and, and did banging against things, did this magical combination of numbers that locked me out of my iPad. So, you know, I get to the um, Apple, you know, I get Apple genius on the phone and they're like, oh, you're totally locked out. Like we're going to have to factory reset. And what that meant was that we would lose all the stuff on the iPad. And at the time, Pascal was very into Minecraft and he had built, I don't know if you know Minecraft, it's a really super cool building game. Uh, if you haven't introduced your kids to it, you might want to because I recommend it. <laughs> there's some, there's like, there's a hardcore video game playing mode and then there's a creative building mode and the creative building mode is so awesome for all ages. Anyway, Pascal had built all these worlds. He, he had worked you know, for probably like a year building all these worlds and they would be lost and, and not recoverable. He was distraught. I mean, like falling out. It was awful, just awful. And I was like, hey, buddy, this is like, I don't know if you want to say the word fuck. This is like the really right time to say it. And he was like, no, it's not going to help. And he never did say it. But I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Because this is the time if you want to like yell it out. This is what cursing's for. But but he wouldn't. So and uh, and we never did recover the worlds. But it was a sad moment. Now. I wish that people didn't judge us based on swearing, but the reality is, yes, we are judged. So I was able to communicate that to, again, my 12, my 13-year-old, be aware that your three-year-old doesn't care. So, you know, if you're dealing with swearing and you don't want it to happen, do not try to logic your way out of it. Don't be like, well, honey, people will judge you and it they don't care. The, the only thing they know is that the words have power and they've created a reaction, right? Now, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how to deal with a kid that's swearing and you most definitely do not want swearing. Of course, the best thing you can do is to not react when they swear the first time. This is near impossible, I think. I, I, I say it because it needs to be said. You know, we need to state the obvious. But it's so hard because usually it's so unexpected and it usually flies out of their mouth. And I almost all of the time, it's either really hilarious or really horrific. So either way, we have this crazy reaction. Now, I think I've told you guys, I think I've talked about it on the, on this podcast. I definitely talk about it all the time. Um, there's the incident where Pascal called me a bitch. It was the first time he really swore. We happened to be. We happened to be at Whole Foods. It was a sunny day. There were moms out on the patio. You know, the judgy moms, it's the Whole Food moms. And I shop at Whole Foods, but you know what I'm talking about. There's a, there's a archetype. There's a Whole Food moms archetype, <laughs> stereotype. And so I was like, Jesus, he couldn't have said this at Walmart, right? No, he had to say it at Whole Foods. And I, he was just kind of lollygagging behind me. And I said, hey, buddy, come on, come on, you're lollygagging, keep up. And he just like stopped and he put his hands on his hips and he was like, make me, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. For all my parenting tools, like they just flew out the window. And I was so furious. I was so I was embarrassed. And I you know, picked him up angrily, put, put him in the car, locked him in the car seat and I had to walk around the parking lot for like six times to cool down. I was so angry. Obviously, a very strong reaction. I happened to have a child who Pascal came into the world with like a natural amount of shame, like more so. I don't know. My jury's still out on past lives, but it certainly it certainly feels like something came in with him from a past life. I've barely had to cross my eyes at this kid and he like. He, he's mortified and he changes his behavior. So like I have that type of kid. So that strong reaction made him upset. We had to talk about it. And he never, ever said that word again, ever. Even even like when he when I would like give him carte blanche to swear. So that's the type of kid I have. I work with enough kids to know that there are these types of personalities. There's another kid who is just a really strong, contentious personality. You know the kids, they came out of the womb fighting, ready for a fight. 
And those kids, you know, that stronger reaction could potentially be like a weapon in their hands. It'd be like, oh, I can really make her lose it. You know, that's that's a case of like knowing your kid. But really, the very first time your kid swears, no matter if it makes you so, so angry or it it makes you want to burst out laughing. Of course, if you can curb your reaction, that's the best thing, right? Because again, either one is a really potent reaction that gives them power. So here's another thing when you're trying to deal with a kid that you don't want to swear. I recommend using the word strong words because the minute you say bad words, again, for some kids, it's like, really? It's bad? I can, you know, I can be bad. I can be this bad with the words coming out of my mouth. So I use strong words because I feel like it sort of unloads the weapon a little bit. If if you can hang with that analogy, it just sort of diffuses, you know, the the power around the bad word. <laughs> but I think, you know, we almost always default to bad world, word. But you can say, you know, something like, uh, that's a really strong word that you probably hear grownups use sometimes. Let's think of other strong words that we can use when you're feeling frustrated, angry, et cetera. When your child does does curse, yeah, brush over the word choice and acknowledge the feeling. So if they were like super frustrated, you know, they stub their toe or they're frustrated and that's when a swear word comes out, be sure to brush over the word choice and acknowledge the feeling like, wow, that's really, I can see you're super frustrated and you use some strong words. Those are strong words for grownups. Let's think of some strong words for you. Yeah. And that way you are acknowledging that I can see why you would use a powerful word at this point in time. Um, You can also do that thing that I ran through, you know, I said a a little, you know, 10 minutes ago is run through the words and let your child actually say them, kind of get it out of the system. The more power you give the words, the more it has. And that's just how it goes. The more you can slide right by it, the more your child will. And that's that's just about with anything that causes a big reaction. Now, one thing that worked really well for us when he was little, and I know it's a huge thing, and you can actually Google this if you don't have any ideas, uh, is just make up your own swear words. And they can be anything. I tend to... Um, what is it? What are we watching right now? Oh, we're watching Pascal Loves the Good Place. I don't know if you've ever watched that with um, Kristen Bell and Ted Danson. Uh, and she, she's supposedly in like the good place, like in heaven. And so anytime she goes to cuss, the words that come out of her mouth are are funny uh, twists. What is it like? Mother Ducker, right? Like those kinds of things. So, you know, you can take those, you you can take twists on on real swear words, but I I didn't like that for kids, for kids, you know, under the age of 10, because it really does. If your kid's saying mother ducker or fricking, the the intention is there, right? For the F-bomb. And I think they're just a little too close. That's me personally. That's, it's your choice. What we used was, I always said Christopher Columbus. I don't know. It came out very, uh, oh, Christopher Columbus or cheese and crackers. Those, those were two that I really used. Uh, Flying ducks. But you can make up your own, you know, think along the lines of shut the front door, right? And people love that one. And I I think that one's really handy. So those are other ideas is help your child come up with something powerful for your family that that they don't often hear. I think that's the other thing. It's like, oh, shoot. We often hear, oh, shoot. So it's like, eh, that's not really that powerful, right? But if you don't often hear like, oh, Christopher Columbus, you can also, I know this sounds very strange, uh, you can also Google Shakespearean insults, which is kind of cool because your kid will be spouting Elizabethan curse words. And let's face it, if people are going to judge, we might as well, uh, we might as well instill some judgment that your kid's really smart, right? <laughs> I actually taught, um, I taught Shakespeare in high school. And I am a very, very dramatic person. So I loved teaching Pascal some Shakespearean insults because I thought it was just, it was just, it suits the drama behind swear words or, or a notion. And he would, you know, watching a three-year-old say a pox on thee is just hilarious, I think. <laughs> so, um, and he would, he was always so dramatic too. He would say things like, um, what did he say? Instead of saying, I'm thirsty, he'd be like, mommy, I'm dying of the thirst. And I would be like, well, just say you're thirsty, man. And uh, what it was his other one that cracked people up. Oh, mommy, I'm feeling a little peckish when he wanted a snack, but not a meal. <laughs> so, 
I don't know. I find I find words like that hilarious. So you can teach your child Shakespearean insults. And again, all you have to do is Google Google Shakespearean insults and a whole bunch of stuff comes up. I think the biggest thing when we're dealing with swearing and trying not to get the kid is acknowledging one of two things, right? We want to acknowledge the emotion under the swear, which is usually a case when the child's used it correctly and is repeating. So I would tend to go easy on that kid, right? Because number one, they picked it up somewhere. And if they are mimicking the exact instance in which it was used, then... They heard it either from you or from a relative or somebody. Yeah. And so we want to go easy on that kid because they were exposed to something and they're just using the words. Yeah. The other thing to acknowledge is the child actually going for a reaction, in which case try not to have one and, you know, give the appropriate consequence that you feel, you know, if your child says this at a party, are you going to leave the party? What are you going to do, you know? whatever you've chosen as your consequence, then that's where a good place to to use your consequence is because they're looking for a reaction. And we all know the kid who is looking you right in the eye and, and swearing. And so obviously that kid is looking to get to you. Right? <laughs> and again, I think the really important thing, because I see so much over talking and so much over explaining of complex emotional processes, don't try to explain to your child, like, why, why swearing might be inappropriate. Just to say it's inappropriate. I don't, I don't want you saying this. That's enough for a child, specifically under six years old. As if you try to keep explaining, I was just around a person in my, in my social life. I was around a a mama a couple of days ago who really just over explained everything to her child. And you could just see this sort of like eyes glazing over. And it's just these complex things. It, it becomes just words, right? And so I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, if you forgive me. But if we're trying to explain to a child like, oh, people are going to judge you. I don't mind if you do, but these are words and blah, 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 blah. Under six years old, it's enough to say it's inappropriate. We don't do that. Yeah. Which is slightly different than because I said so. I I tend to not love because I said so parenting, but we also don't need to explain every single thing to the child because your voice becomes monotonous. The child stops listening and then they stop listening kind of across the board. So that's my opinion. That's my thought on swearing. And I am going to log off now. As always, I hope you guys have an awesome day and rock on. All right, I'm going to sign off for today. You can always go to jamieglowacki.com for the super cool latest updates, including the launch of my new book, yummy new book presale treats, when we release new episodes, and how to work with me directly. And of course, if you need any potty training help, there's a handy link there that will take you to all my potty training resources, including all my courses. That's the Oh Crap Potty Training online course, my pooping solutions course, and my night training supplement. And if you need additional help, how to book with a certified OCRAP consultant. That's all at jamieglowacki.com. Have a beautiful day and rock on. 